You gotta go for it. If you're a guitar player, you gotta go for it. And that means occasionally you're gonna crash and burn. It's just the way it is. Floating one? Well, apparently Clapton. I mean, that's the Clapton vibrato. Yeah. But I... There you go. Wow. Yeah. So Tim Pierce invited me to his house and his studio in California to work on a track and a video with him. I asked him to kind of mentor me while I was there because, you know, there's so much you could learn from Tim. And um, he's been one of my kind of guitar heroes since I was 13, which is about six years ago. And uh, after we filmed this video, we went to Norm's together and we had pancakes and it was just the best day. So thank you so much, Tim. If you happen to not know who Tim Pierce is, he's a session guitar player who's played with probably some of the most famous people you can imagine. And he's played on some incredible records. I'm not gonna play lead at first. I'm gonna actually try a rhythm part. The kind of part I would play on your song. If you brought me a song and you were, you know, singer songwriter, which is what I did for a living my whole life, I'd come up with, a, you know, a part. So let's dive in. So that's how I come up with a part. The, the song is in C sharp and... I try and come up with something that's memorable, that maybe, you know, this is kind of maybe like a piano part, sort of, you know? But I think it would be better if it weren't quite so busy. So let me try again and make it a little simpler. That was pretty cool, yeah, you know? Yeah, I like how just leaving like little gaps of a break can change so much. And the great thing about that too is it leaves space for the second part. Let me demonstrate that. I'm glad you've said that because it's really true. Come up with another part that maybe kind of fills in those spaces. So I'm going to just activate kind of a delay and a reverb. And maybe like I'll move into the low range. that. So I did kind of a call and response on that. I made the second one different. Check it out. And then visually, you can kind of see why it works because they kind of cross over each other. So that's that's my thing. That's yeah. I've I've been doing this for a long time, and it, it and then you just try different parts and sounds yeah. and frequencies. So when you're like layering guitar parts, you can one of the things you consider is like making sure you use a different octave range. Absolutely, because they can get in the way of each other. It's getting a little crowded, and the way I fix that is by panning. So I'm going to take the first two parts and put them to one side. And I'm going to take this part and put it to the other side and play it again, and it should clear out. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Frequencies. You want to pay attention to frequencies, and you're you're literally orchestrating guitar. That's just different guitars, different amps, different effects. It's really orchestration. Then, of course, when it comes time to solo, I actually add a boost pedal. And so, let's do... Let's do a solo. It's crucial to not be too loud and not be too soft because your touch is where all of your all of your expression and your punctuation comes from your touch with your pick. 
And if you're too soft in the track, you lose that. And if you're too loud, you're too self-conscious. If I'm too loud, I'll, I'll rush. I'll speed ahead and go ahead of the drums. And if I'm too soft, I don't get any, any of the uh, articulation because I'm always hitting the guitar just to hear it. Try and find the right level when you solo. Like that. My vibrato comes from my wrist. Yeah. And you're there, but I could see you doing a, a little more confident vibrato coming from your wrist. Um, but that had a lot of poise. And there was that, that note that you hit, that low note, it went right with the chord. That was a nice surprise. That one. Yeah. I'm working on my vibrato at the minute because I think I used to keep my hand there, right? Yeah. Lately, I've started like doing like the kind of floating one. Well, apparently Clapton. I mean, that's the Clapton vibrato, yeah. but I could, I, 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 I feel much better doing it with my wrist, just as a turn of the wrist, like that. Exactly. I find that my finger gets really shaky though. Whereas yeah, you you have I to slow that, it down. So I mean, it's 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 up to you because I see you're, you're releasing your hand from the back of the neck when you vibrato, aren't you? Yeah, because yeah. it helps. I I can slow it down better for some reason. Yeah, I can't do it that way. I have to. It has to be connected, and my wrist has to be doing the motion. So yeah, more like that. That's how I do it. Just play one note for me. Okay, now play a phrase that's three notes. Now try and connect those notes so there's no gap in between them. There you go. I think what I'm hearing is that you're just because of what your your taste or whatever. I'm hearing you could do a, a little more connectivity in your playing, keeping notes sustaining, so that each note lasts all the way up until the next note, basically. Oh. Yeah. yeah. You're you're stopping it before you move on, and that's fine. Oh, I never even noticed I was doing Well, that's the thing. It should be a choice rather than a habit, basically. There you go. Can't believe I just messed that up. It's all right. It was almost good. It was almost good. <laughs> it was good, but we punch in. I mean, I punch in, so it's okay. You got to go for it. If you're a guitar player, you got to go for it. And that means occasionally you're going to crash and burn. It's just the way it is. You are doing, you do have the wrist thing in your vibrato. You yeah. do it. it. You are doing it. I see. Because I was looking over there. You do. You have it. Is it like that all the time? Or is it, does it do I need to work on like being more consistent? You can do it both ways. I mean, I should do other kinds of vibrato, but I really kind of default to this, just this, exact this every time. Yeah. And, you know, I actually should try and change it up, but okay. I kind of, kind of just do one thing. Yeah. But you're doing it. I, I, I see your wrist. You're, you're vibratoing from the wrist. You just did. Yeah. That's where all the strength is. You do the kind of Clapton thing where you kind of released from the back of the neck and you just did with, with your finger. That sounds good, too. That sounds good, too. Yeah. One thing I tried to do there was I used pick velocity for expression. And that first phrase, I hit really hard. And then on purpose, I hit the next one really light. Now I see you doing that too, but that you could probably push it a little further. Okay, so my thing, the way I set my tone, I wanna be able to make it aggressive when I pick hard and then gentle and clean when I pick soft. So to go from to Let me try that in the track. So what I'm 
trying to do is punctuate. <clears throat> it's just like when you speak, you want to put emphasis on certain words. Yeah. I'm just putting emphasis on certain notes. And I'm a big believer in that. And that way, you, 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 I, you, I think you keep the listener interested if you punctuate your phrases. And then one more thing. I mean, slow and fast. I, I love to play slow and then do a burst of speed. Let me demonstrate that. That way, I mean, if you see a guitar player playing fast all the time, I kind of get bored personally. I like to have bursts of speed. We have a friend named Oz Noe who's really, really good at that. He plays very simply, and then he just unleashes this incredible <laughs> blizzard of notes. It really works. There are a lot of players who play faster than that, but for me, that's a fast lick. And and to me, it's effective just to, to throw one out once in a while. But most of the time, I'm going to play kind of slowly and melodically. I think that's that's where my heart is. And I think listeners like that. And then just unleash a burst of speed now and then. And I think that's great for the audience. So this is how I build a track. Here's the drum loop that I have. And this is how I start. I'll pull drums from lots of different places because uh, I have a great drum programmer who's a friend of mine, Nigel, and he'll program drums. There's also a place called Yurt Rock, which makes great drum performances that you can buy. And then sometimes I just pull them off of, uh, you know, I have drums on my hard drive because I've done so many sessions here. Remember, I have a, I have a drummer friend named Benny Caliuta who's really famous, and I wanted to use one of his drum loops for a song. And I said, dude, I'll pay you. And he said, don't bother. It's just a gift. So I checked with him and I used it. Okay. And then I play bass. I've, you know, spent a lot of time with some great bass players. So I try and copy my friends who are bass players and I just have to punch in a lot, you know, Yeah. <laughs> sometimes one bar at a time. Like I'll play and then sometimes I'll just punch in the fill and get that exactly right. So that's the basis, right? And then I have a friend named Jeff Babko, who you guys should all look up, B-A-B-K-O. He plays on the Jimmy Kimmel show here in LA, but he also does tons of records with all kinds of people, John Mayer, you name it. Uh, and I send him my track and he plays the best keyboards in the world. And he's just so tasteful. So I recommend, you know, treating yourself to having your friends play on your stuff. Okay, so here is another trick that I use. Often, my first bass part is actually played with a guitar and a Boss octave pedal. I can immediately, by pressing this pedal, just create a bass part while the guitar is in my hands, rather than going, picking up the bass, tuning it up. Everything you do that stops your momentum, it's dangerous because you might lose inspiration. You got the drums, you got the bass, you got the, the guitars. And in my case, I have my friend play keyboards and that, you know, it, that just makes it really lush. So I have the Starlight and the Golden by UA sitting here. And the Starlight is a great delay. The Golden is a great reverb. And these are two effects that I use constantly. So here's a dry sound, right? So I always am adding a delay. But the way I use delay, it's very important, is I try and disguise it so that you never hear the trails. I use delay so that the guitar floats and has dimension. And in particular, when you use something like this in the track, you don't even hear the delay because the track actually absorbs a lot of the delay sound. Let me demonstrate that. I'm not hearing trails, da, 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 da. I'm just hearing it just a lot. It just helps it blend in, right? Exactly, yeah. 
So that's how I use delays. Same with reverb. This reverb is also great. It has a little bit too much modulation on it right now. So let me change that. Once again, it disappears in the track. Okay, germanium, it sounds really good. I use this word a lot, but it's true in this case, it sounds musical. Mm -hmm. 